Hello everyone. So today I'm going to be showing you how to create a digital escape using Google Sheets. So here I have a table. This is where the players will enter their code, which is their answer. Every time the correct code is entered, this image will change color. In the end, it will change to the new image. The instructions are here. As I enter the correct answer, you'll see that the image on the right will change color. You will see here a clue pops up as I entered one of the codes correctly as well. And then at the end, there's a key. How students will find the clues, they would click on these images to see if there are clues behind these images. So if they double click on the image, this will tell them nothing to see here. So there's no clue there. They can delete that image if they want. Here, major look. There's nothing behind this image. Here I have image. I see that there's a clue. I can enlarge it. And then read the instructions. This is, is clue number three. So I know when I get my answer, I would enter that in clue number three. I can use my right tool. to figure out the question in the maze. Then I can solve it. I can have students save their work on this sheet and just move it to another spot. And then enter the answers in my box. Here I have another clue. They can enter the answer. Here, one of my clues is a Google Doc. This Google Doc gives them a force copy link. Here, it requires them to solve each of these equations. So it tells them how to enter the answer. Here, I have a color lock sheet. When students enter the answer, a letter pops up. It spells a word, and they enter that word as part of their code. And the very last clue is a Google Form. On the Google Form, it asks them for the answers to each of the clues. There is conditional formatting involved. So if they don't have the correct answer, it will tell them that it's the wrong answer. When they submit it, it gives them the final code. The final code will give them the image of a key, and then they are done. And this is what we're going to make today. On my blank uh, spreadsheet, I'm going to reserve some cells for my pixel art. So I'm just going to start with the letter J and work my way to the back. If I need more cells later on, I can always add more later on. So I'm going to resize my cells to fit my pixels to make them square. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the top all the way to the end, and then I'm just going to choose a column to change the size of. And then once I think I have the right size, I can do the same for the row. So I can just high click on the corner, choose a cell, and just change the size. So next, I'm go going to create a background. To create my background, I'm going to use Google Slides. So I'm going to open a new Google Slides presentation. So once I have my presentation open, I'm going to change the size of my canvas. So for this activity, I don't want my canvas to be too wide. I'm going to go to page setup. I'm just going to choose standard. Then I'm going to start inserting my background. So 
I already saved a background that I liked that I found on mine. So I'm just going to insert that from my desktop. So to do that, I'm going to click on background, choose image. Okay, so this is my image. I can also add my bitmoji. Then I'm going to add a callout. So I'm going to go to insert, image. I'm going to search the web. I'm going to find one that I like and insert that. I can enter a text box. Okay, so once I have a background that I like, I'm going to download this. I'm going to save it as a JPEG or PNG. To do that, I'm just going to go to File, click Download, and I'm going to choose JPEG this time. Okay, and then it's downloaded. So now I can take this image and I'm going to insert it into my spreadsheet. So before I insert my image into my spreadsheet, I need to merge my cells together so that there is space for my spreadsheet to go into. Uh, for now, I'm going to guess that I may need this much space so I can highlight the amount of space I need and I can click on Merge. Okay, once I've done that, I can go to Insert, Image, I'm going to choose Image in cell. Okay, so then I'm going to browse and find uh, my recently downloaded background. Okay, so I have inserted my background and I see that there's still some space on the side that's left so I can try to merge more. Okay, so it looks good. I can format it. This is going to be my title. So I'm going to merge these. Okay. okay, you could insert your instructions here. Okay, so once I have my instructions, start inserting my clues. So to insert my clues, what I want to do is I want to hide them behind different images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on insert, and I'm going to go to drawing. And I'm going to insert a text box, then I'm going to format my text box. It's where you would put your clue, put your clue here. Okay, once I've done that, now I'm going to put a, place an image over my text box. So I have some saved images that I have on my computer that I'm going to upload. You can also go to search and you can try to find the images there. So for example, maybe I want this character here. So I'm going to click on that and click select. Okay, now I'm going to resize it so that it covers my whole text box. There it goes. Once it's covered, save and close. And then I can resize it and place this on anywhere I want. So I'm going to add as many objects as I want. Keep in mind that when you do add your objects, you also want to have objects that don't have clues behind them. So I'm done with inserting my objects onto my background. So now I'm going to create the actual pixel art. So I'm making transforming pixel art. So I have an original image and then a transformed image. So what I want to do is I want to work backwards. So I'm going to make my after image first and then I'm going to make my before image. So I have already found a pre-created pixel art sample for me to follow. So that's what I'm going to use. So here is my pre-created pixel art image. So I'm just going to use this as a guide to help me create my pixel art. So here is where I'm going to start my pixel art. It's going to be black, but I'm going to choose a lighter color for when I do my conditional formatting. Um, so I'm just going to choose for now a light gray color. So that's going to be my black. And then I'm just going to count the number of squares across. 
So then I'm going to mark where that ends. So here's one. So here it is. So I'm going to fill it here. And I'm going to do the same. I ha Once I have marked the outline of my pixel art, I can now go to fill the rest of the outline. I'm going to click on the cell and then I'm going to hold my command key and then while I do that I'm going to highlight all the cells I want to be filled. Okay once I've done that I can then click my fill color and then my whole outline is filled. Now I can continue to fill the rest of my pixel art. Now that I'm done with creating my pixel art, notice that all the colors are light colors. It makes them easier to see when you set up the conditional formatting. Before I do that, I'm going to create my table where students are going to enter their answers. So here I'm going to need two columns, so I'm just going to right click and, and I'm going to add another column. So I'm going to insert one to the right. Okay, I like to create the number of clues based on the number of colors I have. So it looks like I'll have five different colors, so I'm going to have five clues. Once I'm done setting up my table, now I can set up my conditional formatting. So since I don't have my activities created yet or done yet, um, I'm just going to put placeholder answers. First, I have to decide what's going to change. Since I don't want the players to know that red is going to be the imposter, that will be my last clue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find all of my cells that are going to be in red. I'm going to then hold my command key, and I'm going to highlight each uh, cell that is red. Okay, once I have highlighted all the cells that are in red, I am going to now start conditional formatting. Okay, so to do that, I'm just going to go to Format, Conditional Formatting, and you can see that uh, all my highlighted cells are here. Um, so I'm going to, my format rules is going to be a custom formula, so it's all the way at the bottom. I'm going to say equal, and then I want it when they have the correct answer in this cell, so it would be J6. So I'm going to put equal dollar sign J dollar sign 6. And for now, it's going to be, since it's a text, I'm going to type in answer. If it was a number, you don't need to put it in quotes. So at this point, now I can change my color to the red that I want. So I'm going to choose this red. Done. So here I have uh, white and I have light blue, but I want them to change color for the same clue. Uh, so if I want that to happen, I'm going to have to create separate conditional formulas for each, but for them to change with the correct answer for the same clue. So I would have to make a conditional formula for the white. Okay, and then I'm going to have to make a separate conditional formula for the blue, but it will be the correct answer for the same clue, which is clue number two. And if I test my color and I don't like the color, I can always go in and change it. I just click on the, just one of the cells in the range that I want to change, and then click on the, the paintbrush. You can see it lights up to the color that you want it to be. And then you go to conditional formatting, and then click on your format rules, and then you can change it to the color that you want. Once I am done setting up my conditional formatting, I can check to see if it works. Okay, my conditional formatting works.
Okay, so once I, I am satisfied and happy with my conditional formatting and everything works, I can highlight this whole section and click on the fill color and reset. Okay, and then I can delete my answers. And now I have a blank slate. Uh, this imposter is still there because we are going to hide this text uh, after we put in our new image. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to now create my before image. So I'm going to apply the same concept as I did to do my original. Okay, so... I have my completed before pixel art, my beginning image. Um, when I created this, I just used the normal colors, not the lighter pastel colors, because I'm not gonna do any conditional formatting on this. If you notice that it says here, uh, the imposter. So what we wanna do is we also want to camouflage this so that it's not seen. So to do that, you just find um, whatever color can camouflage it, there it goes. Um, then you now will notice that there's a huge uh, gap there. Well, we're gonna remove the grid lines anyway, so it will be hidden once we remove the grid line. To remove the grid lines, you just go to View, Grid Lines, and undo the grid lines, and now if everything looks the way you like it, then you're done with your pixel art. Okay, so now we can test this to see if it looks the way we like it. Okay, so I can enter my answer. Once you test it and everything looks the way you like it, then you are done. Now you can just have to go and uh, create your clues and insert them into the objects. And that's it.